Hey guys, my name is Nov. I already have a few hundred hours of playtime in Lost Ark by playing on the Russian server and in this video I will tell you absolutely everything you need to know about Lost Ark in order to be able to progress through the game and have a smooth experience until you reach the very end game. This game has a pretty good amount of misinformation going around about it on YouTube and everywhere so here I am to clear it all up for you guys. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more Lost Ark content. Keep in mind that this guide will help you do everything efficiently, but if you are not into this whole efficiency stuff, please go ahead and play the game in whatever way you see fit. Lost Ark is a phenomenal game and it can be played fairly casually as well as in a pretty hardcore fashion. So if you ask me, just jump right into the game on release and figure it all out yourself. It's a lot more fun that way. With all that said, let's jump right into the only Lost Ark guide you will need to watch. Of course, it's impossible for me to cover absolutely everything, but after watching this video, you will have a very good idea of how the progression in this game works and what things you should be focusing on. For your first 10 to 20 hours of game time, you will be leveling your first character by doing the main story until you reach Northburn. This process can be done in about 10 to 12 hours on a fresh account on pretty much any class, as long as you are not getting sidetracked and only doing the main story quest and some purple and red quests before Art Athene, which is this steampunk kinda continent that takes place in the story right before you sail to Northburn. You also wanna do any chain quests you come by. In Art Athene you wanna do all side quests, so you reach level 50 in Northburn. If you're playing casually, expect over 20 to 30 hours of game time before reaching level 50. For the most efficient time, don't bother with side quests until you reach Art Athene. And also don't stop for every collectible and optional stuff you see. You will be able to come back on a rainy day later on and run through everything you missed in one swoop. Some side quests unlock daily quests, which you wanna do eventually, so don't take too long coming back. You will only need to do it once per account, so what you can also do instead of coming back is to do everything on a new, fresh character when you are no longer in a hurry. The reason we are trying to be fast is that you want to reach level 50 as soon as possible and get going on your daily endgame activities, such as Guardian Raids, Chaos Dungeons, Gear Upgrading and all that. These activities can only be done a limited amount of times for full loot each day, so the sooner you can start doing them, the better. When you arrive at Northburn and hit level 50 in the city, you will keep doing the quest line of the continent in order to acquire your first awakening, which is your class's ultimate ability that can be used every 5 minutes and requires Chaos Shards to be used. These chaos shards you buy at general merchants. For the awakening quest, you will need to visit Beatrice in Trixion. You also get a new ability for your roster that previously wasn't listed in your skills menu. Usually these abilities are very powerful, so make sure to take a look at it. Here are a few tips to make the leveling process just a tiny bit quicker. You can teleport to triports in your area by pressing tab and pressing alt plus left click on the triport instead of opening your map by pressing M every single time. In story-related dungeons, focus on the objective. There's a lot of cases when the dungeon throws mobs at you, but you can just run past them. Only kill what the quest requires you to kill. You can also put songs and emotes on your hotkeys on your hotbar. Make sure to put the ones you use the most often on a short key. For example, your song of escape that lets you leave instances from anywhere. Don't hold on to any gear. Once you reach 50, you will replace everything, so just salvage anything you're no longer wearing. And also, Chuck your potions, don't be afraid to use them. You only need to save the percentage HP restoring potions for endgame activities. The regular potions are pretty much worthless in terms of value, they are there to be used. Now, I'd like you to make a choice. If you are not near the end of your session and you think you have at least about 4 to 5 more hours of game time in you, then go ahead and advance to Shushire and do the story of the continent. At the end of the story there, you will be rewarded with a free set of Chaos Dungeon gear. Two Shire quests also give you some upgrade mats. If you hit Northburn towards the end of your gaming session, instead of doing Shushire right away, just buy the bullet and complete your first two Chaos Dungeons for your first set of gear. There's a very low chance you might not get all the pieces of the armor set. In that case, you will need to wait for tomorrow to be able to complete your set. At this point, you're basically at the end game. However, the game is just about to start, so buckle up, Seekers of the Arcs. You are now in your first set of tier 1 chaos gear and your next upgrade will be the tier 1 abyssal dungeon gear which is better than the chaos gear because of its set effects. This will go on as you are advancing through the tiers. First you always get your chaos gear and then 
your raid gear. Of course, in lower tiers you don't have to go for the raid gear because you will be switching to higher tier chaos gear pretty soon, but if you have the mats, you might as well craft the gear and use it. In order to upgrade your gear, you will need various resources that you get from your daily and weekly activities and exploring islands throughout the world. I'd recommend following this priority list. On the third day after the weekly reset, usually Wednesday in most regions, make sure to take your weekly quests for clearing chaos dungeons, guardian raids and a third weekly quest of your choice. If you like PvP, I would recommend taking the weekly for that. Do your daily quests for leapstones. For the most efficient time, try to make use of your Bifrost teleports and your hourly recall to town. You can open your Bifrost menu by pressing Alt plus W. You are able to save various locations inside your Bifrost, which allows you to teleport to the exact location of your daily quest, speeding up the process by a lot, since otherwise you would have to take a liner and maybe even sail to different islands manually. Do your Chaos Dungeons for upgrade materials and potential gold in forms of raw gold dropped from gold gate RNG or valuable tradable drops. Do the daily adventure island. You can check the compass under the minimap to see what islands will emerge today. If it gives gold, make sure to attend to the island. It will only be available for a short period when it emerges from the ocean, so make your way there beforehand. If you can't be bothered, do your life skills whenever you have life skill energy. You not only need lots of food and stone for your stronghold upgrades, but a higher level on all life skills will be beneficial later on, so the sooner you can start working on them, the better. Other than these, the only daily activities left are to donate silver to your guild for guild currency rewards that can be exchanged for upgrade mats, also participate in all voyage missions you are able to, or pirate coins that can be spent for upgrade mats and lots of collectibles that can only be purchased with pirate coins. Defeat world bosses at certain times of the day for potential rune, card, island token and upgrade mat drops. And lastly, your daily report activities. You can do emotes, play songs and give gifts to certain NPCs and they give you rewards if you entertain them enough. In early endgame, you can get a pretty reasonable amount of gold from this, as well as island tokens which are pretty important to get. So this was your daily checklist. Now let's see what weekly activities you should be doing in which order. By far the most important of course is raiding, since you get your raid gear mats here that you use to craft your gear, but the main thing we're looking at is actually the gold. So you want to do all your raids that give gold every week. You can do them whenever you feel like, just make sure to do it before the weekly reset. However, if gold is the only reason you can't keep upgrading your gear, then don't be lazy and just do your raid. These raids consist of Abyssal Dungeons, Abyssal Raids and eventually when they get released in our region as well, Legion Raids. You also want to do your weekly challenge Guardian Raids and challenge Abyssal Dungeons for even more rewards. After doing your weekly and daily quests, you can withdraw your tokens from the daily slash weekly tab as a reward which you can exchange for gold caskets at an NPC. Usually it's worth only buying the highest tier casket available since there's a chance to get a big chunk of gold as a drop when opening them. And also there are a few more activities that you can do if you have the spare time but it would be too much to go over right now and it would be overwhelming for you guys. So if you're very curious there's a great site with all sorts of information on it called papunika.com. If you're interested click the link in the top right corner. I will also gladly answer any of your questions in the comment section below. Now you know how you can get your gold, how you get your gear and how you get upgrade mats. The next step is advancing to tier 2 gear. In order to do that, you need to reach item level 600, which will allow you to go to the western parts of the map, where you can unlock your second awakening and a lot more content. Whenever you get a gear set of higher rarity, you can recycle your current equipment and all your progression on that gear will be transferred to the other set. You will be doing the exact same thing you've been doing up until here, except you will be doing different raids, but the concept is pretty much the same. You farm mats, gold and enhance your gear. You will also start getting gems that give you damage and better cooldown times on your abilities. Three gems of the same level can be combined into one gem of one higher level. This goes on up to level 10. Tier 2 gems will eventually be pretty much worthless, however tier 3 gems are going to be worth an insane amount of gold once we get tier 3 on the western servers, so start upgrading the gems as soon as you can. Most of it you obtain from Chaos Dungeons. The skills that these gems support can be re-rolled at a certain NPC. If you have gems 
you purchased from the auction house, or that you got from your other characters that support the skill of a different class, you can reroll it at said NPC and it will support the skill of your current class. Rerolling costs only silver, and if you are very picky when rerolling, it can cost you quite a good amount of silver. When tier 3 gets released, in order to advance, you will need to have reached item level 1100. Alright, now we've covered how you can improve your gear, so now let's talk about what else you can do to get stronger. One of the most important things you can do is obtain all skill point potions available to you. For a list and also guides, click the link in the top right corner. These potions are automatically consumed as you obtain them and they give you, well, you guessed it, skill points. There's two tiers of them. The lower tier gives you 3 points, the higher tier gives you 6. These are very important to get, so you can level up more skills, and they need to be obtained only once per account. The skill points you get from these potions are shared between your characters, meaning if you start a new character, they will have skill points to spend right from the beginning. There are also stat increasing potions that work the same way, those are not as important to get as soon, most of them you will just get passively. The skill point potions are locked behind certain activities and collectibles. For example, you get a strong skill point potion after you get 20 island tokens. There's even one you can only get from a secret quest, so I would highly advise you look at papunika.com or other sources for guides that point out where you can get every single potion exactly. And with that, we are up to the last topic I want to discuss, which is engravings. Engravings are passive skills applied to your character. These engravings are essential to obtain and differ from class to class in terms of which ones you should be using. Each engraving has three levels to it. The higher level you can raise it to, the greater the effect will be. Each level consists of five points, meaning if you have five points on an engraving, you will have the level one effect. If you have at least 10 points, it will be level two, and at 15 points, you get the level three effect. You can obtain points from three different sources. The easiest source is Ability Stones. Ability Stones are a reward from various activities, for example, Chaos Dungeons and Guardian Raids. There are different rarities locked behind an item level requirement. The higher the rarity, the more engraving points the Ability Stone can have. Each Ability Stone has three different engraving effects locked to it, meaning it cannot be changed. It will stay the same way you received it, though you get a few of them every Chaos Dungeon run, so it's not hard to get a decent one, but you can also buy one from the Auction House with engravings you need. Two of the engravings on an Ability Stone are positive engravings with useful effects, and one only gives you a negative effect. These Ability Stones must be cut before you can put it on your character. Cutting an ability stone is involved with lots of RNG, even a viable stone can turn out to be worthless if you get unlucky cutting it. Every successful hit on an engraving will give you one point in the engraving when you equip the stone, and this is one way to get an engraving you need. Ability stones are only tradable before being cut. After you started cutting it, it will become untradable. The points you get from your ability stones might not be enough in themselves to give you a level 3 engraving effect, however, equipping jewelry also gives you engraving points. Each high level jewelry piece gives you points to random engravings. Higher rarities give higher amounts of points. Keep in mind, and this is very important, that even though you can wear two rings and two earrings, you cannot wear two with the same name. Each jewelry slot must be filled with jewelry with different names, so when you're looking at the engravings on jewelry, also look at the name of the piece. Jewelry also gives you stats like specialization, agility and all that, so you also want to look at those stats when picking what jewelry you want to use. DPS classes generally go for crit and agility, and sometimes specialization, and supports go for mainly spec and agility. Wards go for more spec, and Holy Knight goes for more agility. Now, if you combine engraving points from jewelry and ability stones, it is possible to get multiple engravings running for your character. This can be taken a step forward with the use of engraving books. These are rare drops from certain activities and sometimes given away as event rewards, though only up to tier 2 I believe. Every single positive engraving has its own engraving book with four different tiers, but also class specific engravings can only be applied through jewelry and engraving books. Each tier requires you to read 20 engraving books of the tier in order to be usable on your character. If you read 20 tier 1 books, you can apply it to your character for 3 points on that engraving. You have 2 engraving slots on your character that you can fill with engravings of your choice 
that you learned from engraving books. You can also apply the same engraving twice for not 3 but 6 points. Now, if you can obtain 20 of tier 2 books and have already read 20 of the tier 1 variant, instead of 3 points, each slot will give you 6 points on the engraving of that book. Same goes for tier 3 and 4 books. Tier 3 gives you 9 points and tier 4 gives you 12 points for each engraving slot. If you combine all these and you have a very luckily cut ability stone, you can have up to 5 active level 3 engravings on a character, but that is incredibly hard to obtain. However, it makes your character incredibly powerful. Other than engravings, you also wanna work on card sets, but that involves lots of RNG, so for now all you need to know is cards are important in the long run, but early on you can just use whatever cards you have. Eventually you want to work towards crit chance card sets as a DPS player and max HP card set as a support player, since heals scale with your max HP. You can also level up the tripods on your abilities, however, this is only really relevant in tier 3, but I still wanted to mention it since eventually you will need to understand it. Tripods increase and in some cases change the effects of your abilities. They can give you more damage, defense or utility and they can be applied to your skills when you raise the skills level to level 4, 7 and 10. The gear pieces you get as a drop inside Chaos Dungeons always include certain tripods that they will increase the level of. If you were to equip a gear piece that increases the level of a tripod on the skill you are using, it will increase the effect of that particular tripod on the skill. However, at an NPC, usually near the gear honing NPC, you can attempt to transfer the tripod levels from a gear piece you don't want to equip to a gear piece you are already using. Success chance differs by what level the effect increases the tripod's level by. To put it simply, if it raises it by only one level, you have a decent success rate, and if it decreases it by more, up to level 4, you will have a less of a chance to succeed at the transfer. Making sure you raise the level of important tripods on your important skills will have a pretty big impact on how effective the skill actually is. You can pick certain tripods you are looking for on gear pieces from your skills menu, and when a gear piece drops that supports the tripods you selected, it will be highlighted not just when you get them as a drop, but also in your inventory. And as I said, don't forget that this is only relevant in tier 3, and we are not getting tier 3 on launch. So this whole tripod level thing is just something to keep in mind, but you are not going to be doing this right from the beginning. Lost Ark is a pretty old heavy game, because lots of content is time-gated, meaning you can only do so much in a day or a week, however with ults you can boost your gold and upgrade met income by a lot. Not to mention, you get to do the fun content more often and experience it on different classes. Having many ults will increase the time you spend playing the game, but you can skip a lot of content on them and just do what makes you gold or whatever you need. If you skip Chaos Dungeons and Guardian Raids, you get some energy stored and get more rewards the next time you complete them, so even if you can't play every day, you are not really missing out on anything in the long run, and playing more classes will make it harder for you to burn out of playing the same class all the time. Doing your most important daily activities takes about 30 minutes per character you have, and of course you want to dedicate a day or two for raiding as well. Those will take a bit longer, especially early on when people are learning the mechanics of the game and the raids. If you are an already experienced player, please have some patience for the newcomers and help them learn the game instead of being toxic. I would love to create an environment that allows anyone to enjoy the game to its fullest, but we can only do that together, so let's be nice to each other. And there it is. This is everything you need to know in order to progress through Lost Ark comfortably. I really hope I was helpful to you guys, and if I was, please give this video a like and share it with your friends who are planning to play Lost Ark as well, and also hit the subscribe button to see more helpful Lost Ark content on this channel. As I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions about anything regarding Lost Ark, leave it in the comment section and I will be more than happy to give you an answer. Thank you very much for watching, have a great New Year's, and I will see you all next time.